Okay, what should your current 5K time be right now in order to go for a sub 20 minute 5K? Now you can adjust these times, these ideas, to whatever you're trying to achieve in the 5K, 10K, marathon, whatever it is. The same philosophy applies. I had exactly that comment. What should my current 5K time be in order to go for a sub 220? I had that comment two days ago and the, the first comment or reply to that comment was it should be 21 minutes which would suggest that that person within three months because three months was the video that I made in order to uh, to train for three months get ready for a 5k to go as fast as you possibly can and how I would go about that that would suggest that that person is capable of a five percent improvement or within three months of training specific training towards 5k so let me just tell you that it's we look at running often like a maths problem. And of course, if you think, uh, uh, you know, 5% improvement in three months, and if you kept on doing that, then of course the sky's the limit. And within no time, you're gonna be able to run a 13 minute PB. Of course, it doesn't work like that. But the way it also doesn't work is, if you've kind of received a comment like that, what should my time be in order to go for a sub 20, 20 minutes? Impossible to answer, because we need to know so much more about that runner. How long have you been running? What is your running background? How long have you been training actively? Maybe you had a football background or a, uh, or a swimming background or a cycling background and you've brought, brought that fitness across. We need to know what that person's complete view is, what their training structure is at the moment, whether they do a speed, speed training within their structured week, whether they build endurance and how much endurance they've built. We need to know what they're currently at and where they've been before we can even start to answer that question. But here's the great part. So for me, and I'll give you my example in a second, but for me, you've got to aim high. And the reason I say that, most runners aim safe. And the reason why they aim safe is because they don't want to let themselves down, especially when other people are watching. And what they kind of perceive as everybody else is watching is maybe they told people, maybe they told their friends, maybe they told their family, maybe they told people who they work with, I'm training at the moment, I'm trying to run my fastest 5K. And this applies a lot more with the marathon where it's a lot more sort of corporate, it's a lot more, you know, when I, and when I say corporate, a lot of companies will get involved in it and then a lot of people in the office will be training towards a marathon, some people will make it to the start line, others will get injured. And it kind of says a lot about your work ethic and how you strategically plan something plan a training program and then the work ethic and the discipline in order to get to the start line in, and ideally in order to finish the race in your goal time. Exactly the same for the 5K. If you put it out there into the world that you are training for a sub 20 minute 5K, it puts an element of pressure on you and therefore people try to stay safe. And so what they will say is, oh, I'm just trying to run a 5K as fast as I can. And that's what you should say. I'm training for a 5K right now. So don't put pressure on yourself. Don't say the time that you're aiming for because you're setting yourself up to fail. But in actual fact, what you're doing is succeeding all the way from the moment that you've decided to implement running as a regular thing in your week and life and the fact that you've signed up for something and you're gonna put your hat in the ring and say, I'm gonna go for it on that day. And I've got a magic number in my head, what I wanna achieve, and that would be amazing if that turns out. But I'm not gonna put the pressure on myself by telling my family and friends, keep that a secret, because the wonderful thing is then, you get to surprise people. And surprising people with your accomplishments is so much better than saying, this is what I'm gonna do and this is what I'm gonna achieve. If you think about people who, if you think about social media, it's all about what people are gonna do. And we often see kind of the final finished result, maybe the Ferrari or somebody's business gets to sell and it's multiple uh, figures uh, in the millions, etc. We don't get to see the graft and the hard work that goes into it. With running, your result will let people know how hard you've been working. And even if you fail, if you go for something and you fail, and you don't quite get the result that you're looking for, it still doesn't mean that you've not done the work. You can do the work and fail. And that's quite beautiful if you think about it. The, the fact that you can really go for it and your expectation can be so high of yourself that you fall short. You should never be embarrassed by that, never. But let me get back to the point of the 5K. So if you've not had much of a running background, if you've just been running a year, two years, you've never followed any structured training program, Right now you're going out three, four times a week and you're running for half an hour, 40 minutes, or you run for five miles or 5K or 8K, whatever you're doing, yeah? All of a sudden, if you say, right, okay, from this date, 
I'm going to train for this race. I'm going to put it in the diary, and um, I'm going to put 5K in the diary, and I'm going to train for three months specifically. And that's going to be 10, 11 weeks of dedicated training where I'm gonna do Wednesday a faster session, an interval session, and then Sunday I'm gonna start gradually increasing my long run. So I'm building my endurance, I'm building my stamina. And what that's gonna do is improve you as a runner in terms of your endurance, but it's also gonna improve the, the Wednesday faster session is gonna improve your running economy, it's gonna improve your speed, and both of those sessions feed nicely. If you've never done that before, You've got to obviously start gradually and that first month will be kind of feeling it out. And I'd always say get fit for the first sort of month, maybe a month and a half. Get fit to a point that that first week, two weeks, three weeks into the three month training plan, specifically towards a 5K, doesn't feel like a shock. So you feel like you can comfortably go, comfortably go into that and you, your body's not wrecked. And so your recovery time's uh, on point so that you can hit that Wednesday interval session hard. You know how to control an interval session and you know how to keep in control of the long run as well. So you're getting as much super compensation from those two key sessions and they're boxed in by recovery runs and easy runs. And you understand the principle, all of a sudden you understand the principle of running a recovery run and an easy run, and what the real purpose of those sessions is, which is to recover so you can hit the long run hard and you can hit the interval even harder, yeah? And there is where you're gonna get your improvement. And that takes you very quickly, with, and especially if you're dedicated and you're consistent within three months, you can shock yourself and you can shock everybody that's watching because the improvement that you can make, if you think about the improvement that you can make when you put a, a two or three weeks of training together, it all comes good and you start to hit those interval sessions, it's something new to you, and so you're treading carefully, you're taking it easier to begin with, but then that starts to work and you start to see the improvement levels. If you're disciplined enough to make that work over a 12 week period, over a three month period, you can shock yourself. And so it doesn't matter what your current time is for the 5k if it's 27 minutes if it's 30 minutes if it's 35 minutes it doesn't matter if you've got very little background in running or even if that's a year two years running but you've not implemented any structure it's the structure and especially the speed work and the long run boosting your endurance and in boosting your speed those things are going to have the big impact and so most runners are going out there and they're just doing three four runs a week and they'll just go out there and run. And they run at the same pace all the time. That is the majority of runners. And so when they run a half marathon, they run a marathon, of course, they're gonna run it a little bit slower than the runs that they've been doing most of the time. But if you can execute that structure, put it in, again, you can shock yourself. And there's no problem in taking 10 minutes off your PB if you're really structured for three months. So what I'd say is don't jump to what you think is possible based on what you've done so far if you've not been running for very long. Focus on, okay, how fast can I run for one, two minutes? How fast can I run for one, two minutes? Okay, it's all about improving that speed endurance so you can improve or increase the amount of time that you can go at that speed. So check yourself by saying, okay, I wanna run 5K as fast as I can in the future. So let's get fit for this training program first and let's understand that interval session is key and the long run is key. So let's get to a point where I can do 12 times a minute or 20 times a minute and that feels quite comfortable for me. I've got 60 seconds rest in between and then at the weekend I'm doing a long run which is 10K. I'm gonna increase that just by 10% every week. So it's 11K the next week, 12K. But my body is able to take on that, absorb the training, because I'm doing the recovery runs and the easy runs easier enough in between. I'm dedicated, I'm committed, and I wanna shock myself. And no matter what, I'm going to do that 5K in, on a specific date and, and have that date in mind because you want to be held accountable. So don't think too much about times of what you can improve, but think ab don't think about what you've achieved so far, sorry, but think about what you wanna achieve. And if your goal is to run 20 minutes for 5K, you can do that if you train specifically for that pace. And that's gonna involve a lot of speed, a lot of kilometers at that speed of four minutes per kilometer, but also improving that endurance and then a little bit of work faster than four minutes per kilometer because you want that first three, 4K to feel quite in control during the race of a 5K. So yeah, good luck. I love comments like that, so please keep them coming. If you've got any questions at all, Leave them in the comments before, below. And, and also I keep asking you, I keep forgetting to ask you, but uh, like, subscribe and put the notification bell on. Thank you.